this chapter, we're going to introduce some of the basic ideas of probability. In this lesson, we're going to work at moving from fractions to decimals and percentages and back again. Okay, hi everybody. So we're in a chapter now where we're going to be talking about probabilities. And remember that a probability is going to be a number that's somewhere between 0 and 1. Okay, so zero meaning a probability of zero means it ain't going to happen, and a probability of one means it'll definitely happen. And then we've got all the values in between. Now, because we're dealing with numbers between zero and one, we want to make sure that we're dealing with fractions and decimals and percentages correctly here. So that's what we want to do here. We want to take a few moments here. We want to just look at some questions where we're moving back and forth between those to make sure that you're comfortable with it. So the first thing we're going to look at here is simplifying fractions. Okay, so we're going to run through a few examples here. All we're doing here is simplifying fractions. So now, look at this one here. I've got 30 divided by 48, okay? Well, here's what we mean by simplifying here. Um, I'm going to look at 30, and I know that 30 is going to be 5 times 6, okay? But I also know that 48 is 8 times 6. Now, Remember that multiplication, when you do your order of operations, you've, you've got to do your, your multiplication and division before you do addition and subtraction. But multiplication and division are, are kind of two sides of the same coin, and so there's a little bit of freedom there. You've got to be careful, but there's a little bit of freedom. You can do some of this in, in a different order if you want. So one of the things I could do here is I can actually do the division of 6 divided by 6 uh, right away here. Now, 6 divided by 6 is 1. And then I can multiply that by 5 over 8. And so my answer is going to be simply 5 over 8. Okay. And that's it. That's what we mean. Basically, we're looking for factors that the numerator and denominator have in common. And then we're going to do the division between those. Okay. Um, and then convert those into 1. And then whatever we're left with, that's the simplified form. So over here, when we take a look at this, 32 and 56, and just to show you how this works here, maybe right off the top of your head, you, you're not familiar with what the, the common factor is. But you look at those and you both think, you think, well, those are both even. So I know that 32 is 2 times 16, and I know that 56 is going to be 2 times 28. And so now I can, I can cancel those 2's there. And so I get this down to be 16 divided by 28. But I look at that and think, well, wait a minute. those. Those are also even, and so this is going to be 2 times 8 over 2 times 14. Cancel the 2's, and I'm going to be left with 8 over 14. But then once again, well, gee, those are also even. So that's going to be 2 times 4 over 2 times 7. And when I, after I cancel that out and I'm left with just 4 times 7, now there's really nothing in common between 4 and 7, so I'm done. Now. I could have jumped to that right away by just recognizing uh, that 32 over, over 56, okay, I could have written that as uh, 4 times 8 over 7 times 8. Whoops, can't hardly see that. And then just cancel the 8s. But if you can't see that, that's okay. Uh, that just means the path is a little bit longer. You, you still get there. Let's take a look at this one. Okay, 72 over 168. Well, right off the top of my head, I don't know, okay. I don't know, but I, I do see that they're both even. Okay, so I'm going to kind of follow that pattern that I just established. So if I take and divide 72 by 2, I'm going to get 36. So I know this is going to be 2 times 36, and 168 divided by 2 is going to be 2 times 84. Okay, well, I cancel those 2s, and now I'm left with, with these guys right here. Well, I don't know, they're not jumping out at me again here, so I divide those by 2. So I know that 36 is 2 times 18. And I know that 84 is going to be 2 times 42. Cancel the 2's. Well, now I can go a little bit faster here because now I recognize that 18 is going to be 6 times 3 and 42 is going to be 6 times 7. So now I can cancel those 6's okay, and I'm left with 3 divided by 7. That's what I was looking for. Now down here, 126 over 189. Well, okay, 126 is even. That's true, but 189 isn't. So, I don't know. Let's, let's check the next number up. I was going to divide by 2. Well, that doesn't work. So let's divide numerator and denominator there by 3. So in other words, I'm going to pull a 3 out here. And yeah, uh, 126 is going to be 3 times 42. 
and then 189 divided by 3, hopefully it works there, is going to be uh, 3 times 63. I can cancel those 3's there. And now I try it again. Now once again, it's I, I'm still left with an even over a number that's not even. So let's, okay, oh actually, you know what, and based on what we just did over here in a previous question, when I look at 42, I recognize that that is going to be 7 times 6. And I recognize that 63 is going to be 7 times 9. So I actually can take a bit more of a jump there and take those out. Now, I'm still left with 6 over 9 here, and it turns out there's a common 3 to both of those. And so when you cancel those 3's, we are left with 2 thirds as our final reduced form of that fraction. And there you go, okay? It's, it's mostly about just being kind of determined enough to go through and, and check a few factors until you get it down to the point where you recognize that the numerator and denominator do not share any factors in common. Okay, and here's another way of working through this, and that's about filling in this chart here. Now, to go from fraction to decimal to percentage, that is the easy one. So I'm going to just pull up my calculator here, and I'm going to enter in 7 divided by 12. And as my decimal here, I'm going to get something that's approximately 0.58. Now, there's a, a th repeating 3 after that, but for what I want to accomplish here, that's okay. And then to convert that to a percentage, all I need to do is really just multiply that by 100, move the decimal two places over to get 58%. Easy. Now, if I give you a decimal and ask you for the percentage, once again, super easy. I'm just going to multiply by 100, move the decimal two places over. Now, it's to go back to the fraction that's a little bit more tricky here. Now, because I've got this uh, to two decimal places, in order to understand how this works, how to go back to the fraction, you really need to have some of the vocabulary down. This is 81 hundredths, okay? Because there's two decimal places, it's hundredths. If it was just the one, if we, if it had 0.8, that would be 8 tenths. So when I recognize that that's 81 hundredths, I write that as 81 over 100, okay? I, did, I write it exactly the way I say it, as long as you're saying it properly. Now, 81 is 9 times 9, and each and 9 is 3 times 3. So there's just a bunch of 3's in here. But 100 here isn't divisible by 3. So there's going to be no common factors between those two. There's no way to simplify that. I'm done. Uh, with 75%, I can write that as a decimal really easily just by moving the decimal the opposite direction. So it becomes 0 0.75. And then, again, to put it over here as a fraction, I simply need to write it the way I say it. That's 75 one hundredths. Now in this case right here, I can simplify this. And I can simplify it because I know, and this is mostly because of familiarity with money, really, that 75 is 25 times 3, and 100 is 25 times 4. You know, 3 quarters and 75 cents, 4 quarters in, in a loony. Cancel the, the 25s, and I'm left with 3 quarters. Now let's go through and do this again here. 13 over 20, well, I'm going to go to my calculator and just plug that in, evaluate that, and I'm going to get 0 0.65. And then to convert that to a, a percentage, I'm just going to move the decimal over, and that becomes 65%. Easy. Well, now let's go here. If I give you 0.27, well, once, once again, let's, let's, let's do the easy one first here. That becomes 27%. Okay, now the slightly more difficult one. Let's convert that into a, a fraction, and we do that by making that 27 one-hundredths. And then I've got to think about those numbers here. Is there anything that those, those guys have in common, the, the 27 and the 100? Then I hum and I ha and I think about it and real, really, no, this is again uh, 3 times 3 times 3, but 100 doesn't have a factor of 3 in it, so that's as good as it's going to get. Now, 9%. And I leave this one kind of off to the end here, to just to finish off with this one. 9% is a little bit trickier. Um, a lot of times people will do this. I'm just going to have my little white out here. A lot of times people, when they convert that to the decimal, if they're not thinking, they do that. But that's not 9%. That's 90%, right? So that's incorrect there. So what we got to do here is make sure that we move the decimal two places to the left, which is going to open up a zero there, and then we put the nine there. Now, I would still read this as 9 one-hundredths. And just like the previous couple of examples, 9 has only got factors of 3 in it, 100 doesn't. So this is as simple as that's going to get.
Here you go.